Are you ready for a change and tired of using the same Linux distribution? Well, maybe you just need a scenery change and what better way to do that than to change up your desktop environment and try something new. Let's open up a terminal and talk about this. And the reason I'm using Pop! OS today to show you how to do this is because they have a great guide available online, which I'll be posting in the description below so you can check out and follow along as well. But overall, I love using Pop! And I'll be showing you how to install multiple desktop environments alongside each other so you can try them out for yourself. Now there's a potential to mess things up, especially if it's your first time using a terminal. So I'd suggest you doing this all in a virtual machine before you replicate it to any of your physical computers. This is a great way to refresh things for yourself, giving your desktop and your computer a new life. So the default desktop here is GNOME, specifically Pop! OS is equivalent of GNOME. They've changed some things up, but let's say we want to use something new. Let's start out with installing Mate. So what I'll do is type in sudo apt install and then we'll need a few packages alongside Mate in order to actually run it. So the first one we're going to download here is Mate-desktop-environment. Now, depending on which Linux distribution you're using, you're going to have to check out whether they have specific desktop environments available for them. Ubuntu is basically going to have at least some flavor of most of them, but other Linux distributions may not. Anyways, the next package is Mate-desktop-environment-extras. And finally, the last one I want is Ubuntu Mate Themes. If I press enter and type in my password for my current user for administrative privileges, I got an error. The reason being is probably because I have to update my mirrors and I can do that by doing sudo apt update and give it a few moments to update things here. I'm gonna clear things out and retry installing. And now I just noticed I misspelt environment, not a big deal. Let's try it again. There we go. This time it's working which is fantastic. Now you can tell it's going to take a bit of space up, almost a gig here of additional disk space in order to install Mate. Well, that's just what happens whenever you install multiple desktop environments. It's gonna take a little bit of space. So if you're okay with that, hit enter or yes, and smash that like button for me as you're learning how to install and try out more desktop environments. Now this might take a while to install all the packages necessary for our first desktop environment, but we're going to go through about four more. That way you get to see for yourself what they look like and maybe make a choice between one. And after everything installs successfully, we'll have to restart a service called GDM. So we'll do sudo system CTL restart, and I'll show you why in a moment, GDM. After doing that, the screen may go black for a moment. Okay, and when you're here, you can click on your user and go down to the cog in the bottom right corner. And now you'll notice Mate available here. I'm gonna click on Mate and then I'm going to type in my user's password and try logging into that desktop environment. All right, fantastic. We've officially installed the Mate desktop environment. As you can tell here, we have the desktop running with our home folder, all the same setup, just a new desktop environment. You can click around and start checking things out for Mate and get a feel for this on your own. But what I'm going to do is install the next setup. You'll want to stick around to the end of this video so you can actually figure out how to remove unwanted desktop environments as well. But let's move on to KDE. So the next one I want to try is sudo apt install KDE. So I'm going to try the KDE standard desktop. And again, I'm being asked for a password for my administrative user. I'm going to install this. And this one here is around 1.3 gigs. Anyways, I'm going to hit enter in order to start installing things. Very similar process to what you saw before. It's going to take a few moments to actually install this package. And on this one, we might actually have a few questions that is asked. And here we go. So it says a display manager program is necessary. So we're going to hit OK. And you'll have probably two choices here, maybe more, depending on if you've installed more display managers. Probably not, though. You want to select JDM3, which is the default display manager here for POP. We're going to press Enter on that. And then the installation will continue. Again, it might take a few minutes in order to install things. But after this, we should have KDE Plasma available to us as a working environment. After things are finished installing, we'll want to make sure we restart GDM one more time. This will take us to the login screen. Okay, again, we're going to click on our user. We don't have to type in a password quite yet, but in the bottom right corner, we click the cog and we select Plasma. Now with Plasma selected, we can try and log in. I'm gonna type in my password and give it a few moments to load KDE. Fantastic, here is KDE running on our Pop! OS system. Everything seems to have gone right here as well. Congratulations on installing KDE Plasma as well. Make sure to check things out, but we're moving straight on to the next one. 
I'm going over to pop the default one just so I can make any and all changes because I know this one works. If you have any issues, you can always go back to pop and use that one to administer the rest of the desktop environments. And that's what I suggest doing. Another popular one is XFCE. So that's the next one we'll be installing. I'm going to do sudo apt install XFCE4 and the XFCE4 goodies. If I press enter, it's going to ask for my password. I'm going to type that password in and give it a few moments. This one only takes around 109 megabytes of additional space. That might be because we already have some packages installed, but either way, XFCE is a great lightweight alternative to a desktop environment. You want to definitely check this one out if you want to take a minimal amount of space and resources up. On this one, you might get asked for which display manager you want to use. Again, you're going to use GDM3. I did not get asked, but either way, once things are installed, this one goes fairly fast. We'll want to make sure again, we restart GDM. So sudo systemctl restart GDM. That's going to log us out and get us back to the login screen where we're going to select the user that we want, go down to the cog and select the XFCE session. We'll type in our password and continue on to loading XFCE. Now, originally I had a little bit of issues with loading XFCE. That's because it required a full restart of the computer. So just know about that. Some of these, if you're having an issue trying to log in, do restart your computer and don't just depend on restarting the display manager to get you in. And look at that, congratulations again. You have another desktop environment. Check it out while I move on to the very last one before showing you how to remove some of these. All right, I'm back in pop to do some administration. And finally, the last one we're going to install is the lightweight X11 desktop environment, which is called LXDE. This is great for a minimal setup that is extremely fast and easy to install with sudo apt install LXDE. I'll type in our password and let things go. This is of course the vanilla version of LXDE, just like we've pretty much done the vanilla version of everything. I think the only one that we really didn't have complete vanilla is Mate. Regardless, whenever you get this configuring light DM prompt, you'll wanna make sure you hit okay, and you'll notice a few display managers, select GDM3. All right, we have LXDE installed. Again, you will be doing the pseudo system CTL restart GDM and logging in by hitting the cog and selecting LXDE. Notice how many different desktop environments we have now, including LXDE, Mate, Plasma, Pop, and XFCE. I'm going to use LXDE and type in my password once more. And interestingly enough with this package, I have Debian in the background for a screensaver, even though I'm using Pop OS. Not a big deal. I would have thought they, they would default to something else, but with LXDE selected, I can now try this one out as well. I gotta say, this one's probably the most responsive out of all of the rest of them, at least for me. I'm gonna log out and finally talk about how to remove these desktop environments. All right, fantastic work. If you were able to install these desktop environments for yourself, you can now go around and, and test things out. So I'm going back to pop, typing my password in, and now I'm going to remove some of these desktop environments so I can show you what that looks like. You know, maybe you run into a problem where you want to uninstall, just get back to normal. Again, I highly suggest doing this on a virtual machine and not on a desktop right away because you might run into problems and you wouldn't want to get stuck and at the very least back up all your data before starting any of this process. So sudo apt auto remove and we'll do two dashes purge and then type in the respected packages or desktop environment that you want to remove. So for example, we just did LXDE. So why don't we remove that one? first. So you might be asking, what do you type in? Well, you just type in LXDE. It, it's exactly the same as the packages you installed. You want to put those packages here in order to remove them. I'm going to press enter and type in my password and give it a few moments. Yes, I want to get rid of this and look, it's removing anything and everything to do with LXDE. I might as well just do this with the rest of them so we can get back to our base, which is the GNOME desktop for Pop! OS. So I'm going to do XFCE4, XFCE4-goodies. We're just reverting everything at this point. We also installed the KDE standard package, so I'm going to remove that as well. There we go. Mate had a few of them, so I'm just going to reuse the command and change this portion to auto remove, dash dash purge, and keep the packages behind. Yes. All right, I've removed everything I could think of. I've probably missed one, but not a big deal. I'm going to restart the display manager again, get to my login screen and everything looks good so far. Click on my user 
And then I'm going to click on the cog and you'll notice stuff is still there. Well, why is that? Well, because we've missed a step. And that step is that we probably need to remove those entries manually. I'll show you how to do that as well. You can do sudo remove, go to the user, share X sessions. And then in here, I'm going to display everything I have. Okay, I have XFCE, Plasma, OpenBox, LXDE, and Mate. Well, I removed LXDE, so I'm just going to remove that entry. Type in my password. I'm going to keep repeating the step for all the ones that I want to remove and that I've already uninstalled. That's important first. Make sure that you do have them uninstalled. And I remove Mate as well as Plasma and XFCE. So if I list things in the user share X sessions, now I only have OpenBox and Pop Desktop. So that's the two entries I would expect to see. Just a little bit of cleanup here that I forgot about. And then I'm going to restart GDM again. Of course, you can restart the computer instead of doing restart GDM. This just makes things a little easier for me. So I'm going to use my user and look at that. I have Pop and OpenBox and it's selected Pop automatically. Cleanup is done. Password is typed in and we're back in our GNOME desktop environment. If for some reason you lose the Pop desktop or something doesn't look quite right anymore, you can reinstall it very much like you installed any other desktop. You would do sudo apt install pop desktop. They have their own variants of the GNOME desktop called pop desktop. So you'll want to make sure to install that package. And it says mine is up to date. So I do not need to install it. If you want to force reinstall, you can always remove and then add it back in. But forewarning, you'll probably want to do this in a different desktop environment because you can mess stuff up and lose access to the current one you're working on, which is pop. Anyways, I hope you learned a lot about how to change around desktop environments, install them, and have fun using them. If you found this helpful, make sure to subscribe below. You've made it this far, you might as well. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.